The image displayed on the screen is widely recognized by many who identify as Hebrew Israelites and by some Ashantis who also align themselves with Hebrew roots. This image has circulated extensively online, purported to show an Ashanti king adorned with a breastplate resembling that of the twelve tribes. There are claims suggesting he might be a Levite, drawing parallels between his attire and that of the high priest. A simple internet search will reveal numerous videos and articles discussing this image, some of which I've chosen to highlight on the screen for you. Now let's take a moment to watch this video. Then we come to a picture which the European travelers drew of the Ashanti king, you see? And the Ashanti king had on his chest a breastplate, all right? This is the Israelite breastplate spoken of in the Bible with the 12 tribes on it and the different stones on it, amen? Amen. They even go into detail about his dress and his head covering that, that the high priest would wear. None of the other people that was rowing the boats had a head covering. You see, the dude was dressed just like the high priest of the Old Testament, the Ashanti people. You see. And we can look at this and say, man, that's coincidence, but that's not coincidence. Especially when all the other facts lead us to believe, amen. That when Jerusalem fell, we didn't go to Europe. We went to Africa. And from Ghana, my friends, from that place in Ghana, is where the Gold Coast, the Ivory Coast, the Slave Coast was done. And a lot of y'all, when y'all take y'all DNA, y'all gonna be, y'all gonna come out, amen, like me and my wife from this area, Ghana, amen, from those other kingdoms. Now let me. It's important to clarify a widespread misconception related to this image. Contrary to what these articles, posts, and videos suggest, the figure in the picture is not an Ashanti king, nor is he a Levite. I want to emphasize on this point. Again, contrary to what these articles you read online, these posts you read online, and these videos, contrary to what they suggest, the figure in the picture or in the image is not an Ashanti king, an Asante king, nor is he a Levite. He is not wearing the biblical high priest's breastplate or the high priest's head wrap. This is not what he's wearing. Far from it. These interpretations are entirely fictional. The sole accurate aspect of these claims is the man's identity as an Ashanti. That they get correct. I cannot stress enough the importance of prioritizing cultural context over textual interpretation. Culture before text. Culture before text. I'll say it again. Culture before text. This principle remains crucial. Upon examining the discussion surrounding this image across Facebook and YouTube, it's evident that Detailed analysis is lacking. Many have jumped to conclusions based on superficial resemblances, driven by their own beliefs rather than factual evidence. What do we observe in the picture? 
let's do some real scholarship. In the picture, we observe a total of nine individuals on the raft. Two Caucasians and seven Ashantis making their way across a river. Off to the left, another raft is visible. But it's not the focus of this discussion, so I'll leave it alone. The river they are navigating is known as the Pra, River Pra, which as seen in the shot on the screen, today suffers from pollution due to illegal mining activities, what we call Galamse. These individuals embarked from their starting point on a mission authorized by the Ashanti king. I repeat it again. These individuals, the dark-skinned ones, the Ashantis, these individuals embarked from their starting point on a mission authorized by the Ashanti king. It means that the person sitting on the raft is not the king. I'll take it again. These individuals embarked from their starting point on a mission authorized by the Ashanti king directed towards the English general. Their destination lies across the river Pra, where the European settlements were located. Among the group, the seated figure is identified as the town crier. I repeat that. The seated figure on the raft in the picture is the town crier. The remaining six individuals have been tasked with ensuring the town crier fulfills his duty accompanying him to guarantee the completion of his errand. It means that the seated figure has been sent on an errand by the Ashanti king and the six accompanying him are there to guarantee the completion of this errand. I'll give you their names in the Ashanti dialect very soon. Now, when attempting to buy a print of this image online, its accompanying description reveals valuable information. It states, Sketches of the Ashanti War by our special artist. Ashanti Ambassadors, plural. Crossing the Pra from the Illustrated London News, 1874. Ashanti War. Ashanti Ambassadors, plural. Crossing the Pra. Ghana Antique Print, 1874. Ghana Boats. It's important to note that the description identifies the figures as ambassadors, not as an Ashanti king or priest. I repeat that again. It is important to note that the description identifies the figures as ambassadors, not as an Ashanti king or priest. This indicates that they are representatives dispatched on behalf of and representing the Ashanti king. Note, it's not only the dressed up Ashanti who is the ambassador. Even those who are not dressed up are called ambassadors. So we have to clarify 
the difference between the one sitting and those surrounding him who are not adorned with the regalia that he is adorned with. Notice the date we have on the image description, 1874. The specific date is January 8th, 1874. January 8th, 1874. Now, let's look at our sources. In this book, Henry Moulton Stanley, Kumasi and Magdala, the story of two British campaigns in Africa. We're looking at the Kindle version, page 128. What does it tell us? Early the same morning, Lieutenant Grant, in charge of the pickets on the other side of the pra, was informed by his people that there were some strange people, probably Ashantis, skulking behind trees at some distance beyond. When Lieutenant Grant arrived upon the scene, he found both pickets and strangers gesticulating violently towards each other, ducking their heads and dodging behind any defensive tree that offered itself. Each evidently desirous to impress the other party with the feelings of amity which possessed them. But, in the words of a British officer who criticized the performance, both parties were in the beastly funk. The lieutenant, however, contrived to calm the gesticulative pantomime and to induce the small party of Ashantis to come forward when he was told by a small, stoutly formed Ashanti wearing a large square gold-plated badge on his breast that he was the town crier of the Ashanti capital. I repeat that, that he was the town crier of the Ashanti capital come upon an errand from the king to the English chief that his companions, at least six of them, were sent with him to see that he did his duty. There you have it. The individual in question is neither an Ashanti king nor a priest, but rather a town crier on a specific mission accompanied by six others, tasked with ensuring he carries out the directives of the Ashanti king. This raises the question, why would a town crier be adorned with such ornaments? I would ask the question again. Why would a town crier be adorned with such ornaments? The answer lies in understanding cultural nuances, something that seems to be missing from the narratives of those who have discussed this image in posts and videos. Their interpretations overlook the depth of cultural practices involved. Let's delve into the fascinating world of Ashanti town criers. So, again, the figure depicted in the image is identified as a town crier, leading us to explore the realm of Ashanti town criers, also known as court criers or courier. In the Ashante court, we encounter various roles, such as in Senier Four, in Senier Four, De Wu Bofu, De Wu Bofu, Asom Fofena, Asom Fofena, or Asom Fofu. So these are the various town criers 
or criers of the court, the Ashanti court. Now let's focus on the insanir for, insanir for. The term insanir is composed of a seng, referring to the distinctive gold-plated heart worn by these messengers, and near, near, indicating the message they convey to individuals, chiefs, and the populace. That, that near, the, the word near is akin to a manier message, those who understand the language. So again, the term insanier is composed of a seng referring to the distinctive gold-plated heart worn by these messengers. And then near, which indicates the message they convey to individuals, to chiefs, and the populace. In Senefo, the town crier, predominantly serve as messengers, executing their duties alongside Asumfofo, those who carry the swords. Speaking of which, let's take a moment to shed light on those who carry the sword. The Asumfofo. The Asumfofena or the Asumfofo denotes a collection of courier swords. We have Jejetre, Wura Setie, we have Insnoma, we have Abonia, there is Achechidie, we have Ekuma, we have Oboromankoma, and a set of Infinatne. These swords are wielded by the Osumfofo, that is, those who carry the sword, in tandem with the Insenierfo, the town criers, as they journey together to fulfill errands, whether relaying messages from the Ashantahine or extending invitations to the Menshia Palace for conflict resolution purposes. They play a vital role in communicating important matters from royal lineage events like a death in the royal family to declarations of war. During these ventures, the bearers of the Osumfofena, that is, the swords, remain silent, acting as witnesses, while the insanir for the town criers eloquently deliver the messages. Okay, now back to the town criers. The Insanierfo, the town criers, are recognized for their pivotal role in state ceremonies, ensuring the orderly conduct of proceedings. They stand witness during court cases as well, just before the Asantehine, the Asantekin, delivers verdicts. And they are also instrumental in disseminating messages from the Asantehine to the inhabitants of Kumase, the Kumase metropolis. In the past, prior to the advent of modern communication channels, announcements from the Menshia Palace were entrusted to the Dewubofwo Hine, that is the head of the Dewubofwo, who, through a rhythmic pattern, played on a large Dewu. Dewu is the gong gong. So, through a rhythmic pattern, this Dewubofwo Hine played on a large Dewu or Dewu gong gong while traversing on foot attracting public attention before conveying the message orally. Now, while the town crier do not engage in poetry, like the Abrafo, 
They utilize their linguistic expertise and profound understanding of the Chi language to effectively relay messages from the Ashantihine, the Ashanti king, to subordinate chiefs nearby and afar. So, seven as both couriers and court criers, the insania for the town criers, they collaborate with the bearers of the sword. While the bearers of the sword authenticate the message source through their swords without speaking, it is the town crier, insania for who delivered the message to its intended recipient. So now you know the differences. You know the various town criers in the Ashanti kingdom. In Senefo, they will buffer Asumfofina or Asumfofo. These are the various town criers in the Ashanti kingdom, amongst the Ashanti. Now, let's shift our focus to what some refer to as the breastplate of the high priest. Do the town criers in Senefo adorn gold plates? Indeed, they do. Displayed on the screen is an image of the Ashanti town criers, the insignia for. What stands out on their head gear? Gold plates. I repeat that again. Displayed on the screen is an image of the Ashanti town criers what we call in Senefo. What stands out on their head gear? Gold plates. Your rank dictates not only what you wear, but also how you wear it. In the depicted image, the individual has his draped around his neck. While the elite members proudly wear it as a regal crown, sort of, atop their heads. From left to right, we have Kwame Amankwa, Kofi Atien, Bafo Apiedje Duya, the second. He is the chief town crier, the head of the town criers, what we call Insenyehene, and he's donning a special hat, distinguished from the others. He's donning what is called a domasa hat, a domasa hat. I'll explain that very shortly. Next to him is Yao Apia Ajay, he is also wearing a distinctive hat with a distinctive gold plate because he is the Dewu Bofo Hine. He is the Dewu Bofo Hine. And next to him is Efriye Asare. So, as previously mentioned, within this fraternity, your position determines both your attire and how you carry yourself. Both your attire and how you don and what you don. Your position determines your gold plate. Zooming in on the gold plates, adorning their hats, we observe a distinction. The first two and the last two display a rectangular shaped plate akin to the one worn by the town crier in the 1874 picture around his neck. 
These are paired with rectangular shaped hats worn by the sub leaders of the town crier fraternity. Again, the first two and the last two displaying a rectangular shaped plate akin to the one worn by the town crier in the 1874 picture around his neck. Theirs are paired with rectangular shaped hats. Same gold plate. But theirs are worn on the head. Because they are sub leaders of the town crier fraternity. They are sub leaders of the insignia. In the middle, we have the adomasa, which is characterized by a conical shape with three gold plated casts affixed to the wide skin of the Mongo Bay monkey. The Mongo Bay monkey. Now, the choice of white is the white skin of the Mongo Bay monkey. Why white? The choice of white is significant due to the Mongo Bay monkey's usual black hair. However, the leaders of the Mongo Bay monkey were white hair, which aligns perfectly with this hat, exclusively worn by the leader, the head of the town criers, the Insaniehine. What progress have we made thus far? We have scrutinized the 1874 illustration and successfully pinpointed each significant individual depicted. We have determined the specific river where the raft was situated and its intended destination. Furthermore, we have debunked the misconception of the town crier being erroneously identified as an Ashanti king. Delving into the intricacies of the town crier's portrayal, we have meticulously analyzed the gold plates embellishing their attire, shedding light on the image and rectifying prior misinterpretations made by different educators and, should I say, organizations or groups. Now, I hold no objection to whether one chooses to identify as a Jew, a Hebrew, or an Israelite. I hold no objections. My only request is for you to present stronger evidence. Should you reference an oral tradition, ensure your understanding of that tradition is comprehensive. And if you cite a custom, make sure you are well informed about it. Let's move beyond relying solely on internet research. For those who claim to be educators, consider immersing yourself in first-hand experiences by visiting the Ashanti court and documenting your investigations directly. As I've always said, we should let our search for truth be comprehensive and truthful. I hope this has been clarified with enough detail and information for you to know that the image is not what it has been said to be. Shalom.